Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and today I want to talk about the social orientation and the need to fit in. I think everyone wants to fit in. Yes, everyone on some level wants to fit in. It's a base human instinct. It's one of the Enneagram's three instincts, the social orientation, the drive to fit in. And here, the dilemma of the social orientation is we all tend to believe that to fit in, you have to compromise yourself. Yeah, a lot of people believe that if you want to fit in, you have to hold back your interests and your personal hobbies and what you find interesting. You have to go outside your comfort zone. You have to go outside your personal boundaries. And you have to meet people where they are, on their level, on what they are interested in. And you have to go with the flow. Like that's the third thing. You have to go with the flow. You have to do what everyone else does. You have to be like everyone else. You have to be like the cool kids. You have to wish that you could be like the cool kids. And here's the thing. Like the social orientation. It's all about not wanting to feel alone. But at the same time. When we respond to the social orientation. We feel alone. That's the strangest thing. Like the more we try to fit in with other people. The more alone we feel. Often because we go in doing all these three things and then we feel that the people we are talking with like even though they seem to live, love us and even though it feels like we're a part of the group we feel so bored and drained and we feel so understimulated and we feel so rejected because we have been rejecting ourselves in this process yeah we reject ourselves going into this initially and we start feeling alienated because we know really that what we're putting on is a charade and this charade is so important to talk about because everyone is doing it. Yeah, talk to anyone individually, one-on-one, -on -one, and you'll meet a different person than if you took this person in a group or a social environment. You'll notice your friends changing. You put them together and suddenly they become someone else than who they were when you were just talking to them. And they were having, they were having so many cool things. They were funny, they were quirky, they were weird, they were odd. And then in a group, suddenly they're like everyone else. And they're suddenly like all that was cool about them, their unique sense of self, their personal way of thinking, how they saw things just became an echo or mirror of everyone. And what I find myself wondering in all of this, and it's important to think about, like this is the most absurd thing I find about groups. Groups and social occasions often hold down all interesting topics you can't get real with people in social environments it's very difficult to find people you can be real with in larger groups it takes time before people realize that it's okay to get real around this group of people because everyone is looking at each other's and everyone's doing what they're doing what are they doing and everyone's trying to mirror and echo this and in this who leads who actually decides what the group wants I think this is the most fascinating question because who actually does it? Think about this for a second. In your groups and social occasions, who is it actually that decides? Often the answer is nobody. <laughs> nobody is having any control over what's going on. Everyone is just following lead and nobody's leading and everyone's like just looking at. And this is the weird thing like where the lead like just becomes this unconscious manifestation of what we think other people want to talk about, what we think other people like and what we think other people want and here's the thing it's just a big illusion it's just a charade it's just there and this uh, this is why often like uh, at some point when you're building a new group first you have this like unconscious expectation of like what everyone else wants and then you get exhausted living up to this and then everyone gets upset with one another and then you have a conflict and after that finally you can get something real. Often that's the three stages of building a group. You have that phase where everyone is just following lead and then people are starting to get really fed up with following lead and then the group falls apart a little and if it still survives that's when you can actually start connecting with people and talk things out and you can start finding a better balance, something that really fits people's true interests. And this is what it's all about. The social orientation is all about learning to overcome the initial impulse that to connect with other people, you have to be something you're not. Connecting and wanting to not be alone is a dangerous because the desire not to be alone is, can be what makes you alone to begin with. If you're so focused on not being alone, 
that you're compromising and rejecting yourself in the process, you still end up feeling alone. Think of the person that you know in your life that is the most normal. Think of the person everyone seems to like, the person that gets along with everyone. Realize that these people are not real. And talk to them individually. Like actually get to know them, have a beer with them, sit down, have a one-to-one, have a heart-to-heart. But you'll notice this, these people have so many issues, so many struggles, so many feelings that they're not talking about. So many things going on. And it's all hidden, it's all gone and when you put them in the group again they're smiling and they're acting like nothing had happened what I find is these people are often longing for the desire to be real they're longing for the chance to actually have real conversations to actually go down and uh, to actually think about things that's all they want and uh, like the social dilemma, the dilemma of the social orientation is just this fickleness. It's this fickleness of connecting with and acting like you are part of the group and at the same time feeling like you have something odd about yourself that you have to hide. Yeah, often the feeling that people with a strong social orientation have is just this thing that I have something weird about me that I must hold back. I have something odd about myself that I can't talk about. I have this secret that I'm hiding and I'm afraid that this secret will leak out and people will notice how weird I am and people will throw me out of the group. And this is something that can become almost a self-fulfilling hypothesis because often... What we're building is really shallow relationships. And here, like often, every one of us will at some point experience a trauma. Every one of us will experience a difficult time in our lives. Something will break, something will fall apart, something will not go as planned, we'll make a mistake, we'll fail, we'll slip up. Because our real self is always trying to lure below the surface, it's always trying to get out there, it's always trying to make itself revealed. And often what we find when this happens is alienation. Like we truly have that brief moment where everyone disappears and you realize like, where did my friends go? I had this uh, experience in politics, uh, leaving my first political party, the Social Democrats, when I was really young. I noticed suddenly that nobody would talk to me. I just left the party. I said I don't really agree with the principles anymore. I think I want to find my way somewhere else. I want to move on to something new. And suddenly nobody wanted to talk to me anymore. Like that's what happened. Like I had worked so hard to connect with everyone and to build these connections and build these bonds. But very few of these bonds actually ended up lasting. When I saw these people on the town, they wouldn't even look at me. Like that was the most weird experience. Like they just wouldn't look at me. I would be branded a traitor. I would, I don't know. I was just stigmatized and left. And that's... That was a truly difficult experience. And I kind of set myself up for it really hard by not being more real with these people, not sharing that I was having issues with the party, that I was not feeling good about the policies, that I was feeling like things were too conservative for me, too slow for me. And if I would have talked about it and been more real with people, perhaps they would have understood why I did what I did. Perhaps they wouldn't feel that I was just acting... (laughs) out of no reason perhaps they would have noticed that it wasn't something that came out of nowhere and it kind of was what it was it just became something that came out of nowhere at some point you can't hold up the charade anymore and you just have to move on and that's when you really risk hurting people because uh, they will feel upset in a sense that you weren't more real with them And being real is truly difficult because it requires being vulnerable and it really requires us to show people our core. Of course, that's why we do it, because it's difficult. That's why we try to hide it, because it's difficult to be real about it. And because this fear is just so real. Yes, in the past, people have been burned and branded as witches. Yes, in the past, people have been excluded for what they were told for telling people how they felt or what they were interested in, for expressing their true views. Yeah, it's happened in the past that other people have been stigmatized and alienated for who they are. People have been bullied. It's not a fear that comes out of nowhere. It's a fear that is deeply rooted in our culture, that is constantly promoting fitting in, that is constantly promoting social consciousness. But at the same time, 
has so much blatant bullying and repression and uh, stigmatization of so many different ways of life. I know that a lot of these issues are the root of people who are, who are due to the social orientation. <laughs> like, and here's, like, here's the thing, what I'm trying to say is, due to the social orientation, if you feel that you're afraid of being found out for being weird, you often become even more preoccupied with finding other people who are weird. You start covering up your own weirdness by making aware of other people aware of how weird other people are. You point at other people to deflect from yourself. You fit in by attacking others. You bully because you are afraid that you will be bullied. It's the fear that drives the things we are afraid of. The fears tend to become real and it's horrible. It's difficult. It's terrifying. Like... Uh, how we make our fears real, how we push our traumas out, how we make other people the recipients of our own worst nightmares. And it's this why it's such a two-folded issue. It's not just about being brave enough to express yourself even though you might be bullied for it or laughed at for who you are. But it's also about standing up for other people who are being themselves, who are being weird and not bullying them and not attacking them for it, but saluting them for it and laughing with them and standing with them in this. We have to come at it from both ways because we need a support system in all of this, a support system for each other's. And that's how I want to end today's video. I hope it helped teach you a little about the social orientation and hoped, I hope it helped you show your next steps to being more real, to having more real connections and to feeling more connected with the world and with the people you care about. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video.